If you know me, you know how much I love LEGO Pirates, and to celebrate the success of my LEGO Pirates Retrospect series, I thought it would be fun today to rank every unlicensed pirate ship LEGO has released. Starting in 1989, we have the first LEGO pirate ship ever released, that being the Black Seas Barracuda, which was designed by Niels Milan Peterson. This was the first LEGO pirate ship ever released, and it created the blueprint and the formula, and most, if not all, LEGO pirate ships, both licensed and unlicensed, share resemblances to this fantastic ship. This design was revolutionary, groundbreaking, and opened the doors for what was possible with LEGO pirates. With other themes and properties, we saw LEGO struggle for years, but with pirates, they were able to release a fantastic pirate ship in the first year of this property, which set it up for nearly a decade of success with the classic Pirates property, and it deserves to be in the S tier. Next up, we make our way to 1993 with the Skull's Eye Schooner. Many consider the Skull's Eye Schooner to be the best LEGO pirate ship of all time, and honestly, I don't blame them. While it did share many resemblances with the Black Seas Barracuda, also had its own identity, its own vibe, its own aura. It had an extra mast, it was different colors, it had different colored sails, and I think as we slowly but surely travel through the decades on today's list, we'll notice that the Skull's Eye Schooner has kind of been underrepresented, which is truly unfortunate. And perhaps that's why I'm even more fond of this ship, S tier. Also released in 1993 was the Renegade Runner, a much smaller ship, but one that's also near and dear to my heart. This ship featured Ironhook, another pirate captain featured in the classic Pirates line. And while it may be small, don't confuse it for a bad set. I love the Renegade Runner, and I love what it represents. Is it as majestic or as glorious or as special as the Barracuda or the Schooner? No, of course not. But for what it did and what it represented, and for being a high-quality, small pirate ship, I see really no problems with the Renegade Runner. And for that reason, it's at A tier. In 1996, Captain Roger Redbeard returned again with a brand new ship. But unlike the Black Seas Barracuda or the Skull's Eye Schooner, this ship did not have that wow factor. Don't get me wrong, I respect LEGO for what they tried to do with the Redbeard Runner, introducing a ship with a ton of play features. But at the same time, this ship just looks off. They could have added in features for play while also having a fantastic design. Instead, we get this unorthodox looking pirate ship that just falls apart easily. And for that reason, it's at D tier. 1997 shared a similar problem with the Crossbone Clipper. As I mentioned earlier, I have no problem with smaller pirate ships. For me, size is never an issue. But this ship just feels off. Looking at it, it looks very blocky. It looks kind of childish. No, I'm not going to put this at D tier. C tier is where this ship is going to reside. Had LEGO removed the green that's in this set for really no reason, and maybe had a less blockier ship, I think I would have much preferred the Crossbone Clipper. And that was how Classic Pirates ended. But luckily for fans, LEGO Pirates returned in 2004, but it was a pretty odd theme. Of course, the 2004 theme was the 4 plus slash juniors wave, which gave fans two pirate ships, the first being Captain Crag's pirate boat, which is honestly probably the ugliest pirate ship of all time. I know it is a 4 plus slash junior set, and I'm accounting for that when I'm talking about this ship. It's that bad. You know, if I was a kid, I would not want to play with this. As an adult, I do not want to build this. I do not want to see this. I do not want to do anything with this. It is horrendous. It is horrible. It is horrid. Now, the other ship from 2004, that being Captain Redbeard's pirate ship, it's not the end of the world, okay? Once you account for the Junior slash 4 plus design, you can look at this set and say, okay, it's not for me, but it's all right. Is it S tier? Of course not. But is it D tier? No, it's not horrid. It shares elements of the Black Seas Barracuda. It has Redbeard, so for me... I think I'm going to throw it in C tier. Now, in 2009, fans finally got an unlicensed pirate theme with actual minifigures, with the theme LEGO put out to celebrate 20 years of LEGO Pirates. And included in that line was a new pirate ship, that being Brickbeard's Bounty. Again, you take one quick look at this set, and you can obviously tell it is inspired by the Black Seas Barracuda. And when looking at this pirate ship, there are really no complaints I have with it. It's cool. It's a solid build. It helped introduce a whole new generation to LEGO Pirates. Honestly, with me, I don't really have much to say for this set. I don't think it was groundbreaking or revolutionary, but at the same time, it doesn't really have any major flaws. 
and for that reason, I'm going to throw it in B tier. Thankfully for LEGO Pirate fans, they were blessed with another theme just six years later, with 2015's Pirates theme, which saw the release of the Brick Bounty. Now, the Brick Bounty, I'm going to keep it a buck. I own this set. It's kind of mid, okay? Again, you take one quick look at it, you know what set inspired the Brick Bounty. But when compared to even 2009's Brickbeard's Bounty, this set just feels like a cheaper version. It feels, just feels like it's lacking something. And I felt this way when I purchased the set, even when I was a child. I could never really grasp what it was. And this just feels like a cheap copy of Brickbeard's Bounty. I feel like LEGO could have done something really special with the 2015 theme. Skull's Eye Schooner has never really been remade. And this 2015 theme gave LEGO the perfect opportunity to do just that. But no, all they did was make another remake of the Black Seas Barracuda, and one that was worse than the remake that came out six years before. It's for this reason that the Brick Bounty, which is a ship I own, is in C tier. And that takes us to 2020, the most recent time we have gotten LEGO Pirate Ships, which saw LEGO put out two pirate ships, the first being Pirates of Barracuda Bay. Part of me feels bad even calling this a ship, because the beauty of this set is yes, it's a remake of the Black Seas Barracuda, but it can also be split up and turned into a pirate base for Captain Roger Redbeard and his pirate crew. This set I was lucky to purchase at Brickworld Chicago, and no, I have not built it yet, but pretty soon I will be on live stream, so make sure to turn on notifications for that. This set is fantastic. Between it reigniting interest in the LEGO Pirates property, creating the blueprint that LEGO has now followed to release retro remakes for other themes like Castle and Space, and just being a fantastic set overall, Pirates of Barracuda Bay is such a beautiful and special set. It honored the Black Seas Barracuda, while at the same time providing pirates with a boost of energy that the property desperately needed. And you and I both know that I would be lying if I said this set did not deserve to be in S tier. And last but not least, we have the Creator Pirate Ship. Honestly, up until today's video, I've always kind of ignored this pirate ship for whatever reason. I think the idea of it being released under Creator instead of being in its own LEGO pirate theme, as well as the price tag, has always made me hesitant to check out this set. But with today's video, that obviously changed. And as I look more at it, I'm impressed by what LEGO did. The Creator Pirate Ship is special because it brought something new to the table. Is it S tier? No. But it is A tier without a doubt and I really need to get this set before it retires. Which, speaking about that, it's been on shelves for nearly four years. So that's that. That's my ranking on every unlicensed LEGO pirate ship ever released. Let me know down below where I got it right, and also where I got it wrong. As always, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.